Hello and welcome. Today we're gonna learn how to achieve a reversal through Python coding. We're going to ensure that our data which transfer between the client and server is going to be packed twice, encrypted and compressed. So let's begin. What is in a reverse shell? Reverse shell, like it sounds, it's a reverse connection. We are going to see that the client is the first to start with the establishment of the connection with the server, meaning he is the first to send a scene request to the server. In our case, the connection type here is a TCP. As we will get the establishment of the TCP connection, we need to handle the shell um, the shell the CMD process with our client how the server is uh, will be able to see any uh, output and how is going to send any input to our CMD process at our client site as you remember at the old days when two uh, clients uh, wish to talk to, they use a netcat. With a netcat, it's like a terminal a chat. It's not like it's a terminal chat uh, between two uh, between couple of uh, computers. Let's say right now two computers. Okay, so we are going to see all the uh, all the uh, text, all the connection uh, data between those two uh, uh, clients with a terminal uh, a terminal window so the best way to achieve uh, and to visualize the command prompt from our client side is to use the popen subprocess command in python which going to uh, assist you this command is going to create and control the command port process we're going to control the input of the process the output of the process and the error uh, output of that process so if we can talk differently with the process through the popen subprocess and we have control of the input and output so we can visualize the command prompt to our server side uh, through the uh, terminal window how are we going to achieve it the popen subprocess uh, give you uh, the std out and the std err which going to represent the output and the output error of the process and of course the input we are going to send it through our uh, server into the uh, popen subprocess uh, command so this is how we are going to visualize the command prompt at our client side let's see some uh, coding at our server side and our client side and we will have more understand understanding how to achieve it correctly and understand the uh, this type of connection so at the right side is the uh, server side and at the left side is the client side let's print screen both of them and it will be more easy so let's start with the server side at the server side as you can see um, I import some basic modules I started with the OS we don't need the sub process is for the client side the socket is for um, creation of the socket of course uh, the slib is for 
the compression of the data we are going to send to our client. Destruct model is for fact. We are going to pack twice the data we are going to transfer to the client. And the base 64 is for encoding the data we are going to transfer to the client. So the next step that I did is of course to create the socket. I choose a TCP socket, uh, which is a SOC stream, and I use IP version 4, which is represent the AFINET. Then we will need to bind uh, the socket to our IP, to our server IP, and the port. So I choose the port 1010, and when we will type the socket.bind, we are going to uh, create uh, and to bind the socket uh, to our server port and IP. After we we got this binding, we will listen to one connection, which is the client connection, and just then we are going to accept from the socket the client connection okay if the client will listen we can take the connection and use it for communicate with the client for the socket so the next step is to create an endless loop okay and then i the first step is, of course, that we're going to send any command prompt commands to our client from the server. So I let to the server uh, side uh, to choose whatever I want to send for the raw input uh, command. Then I am verify if the server side is pressed and clicked just on the enter um, on the enter key okay if you will press just on the enter key without type anything the len the length of the command is going to be zero so i'm going to let the server side again i'm giving a second chance to insert any uh, command or to type something uh, except the enter key if it will not do so i will send a dear command to the client that's the way okay with with uh, both if sentence we are going to achieve a stable uh, reverse shell without interrupt uh, the connection with the enter key then we need to verify if the server side is wish to exit the connection if so before we are going to uh, disconnect this connection we are going to compress this uh, data and send it to the client in order that the client as well is going to close the connection from his side not just from the server side after we send it to the client we break the endless loop when we break the endless loop we going to be here and the command is telling to close the connection The next step is to pack twice, okay? I pack twice the data. If, if we typed, uh, if in our data we typed uh, anything except exit or just enter without anything, I'm going to take the data I typed or 
the man who is sitting uh, behind the server and packed once uh, with uh, regular uh, struct pack and the second time I packed it as a network byte ordering the data. The next step I did is to compress the data I packed and the last step before I send it to the client I encode the data through base64 encoding and just then I'm sending the data to the client. As the client is going to receive the data, is going to send us send us an output if it's a, a healthy output. If our command was uh, was regular, we will get some uh, output uh, that will show uh, the result of our command. If our command were not uh, right, not accurate, we will get an error. So the next step in our server side is to get, after we're sending something, to get something, to get data. And just then, we're going to decompress the data we got from the client and print it into the terminal in order that we are going to visualize, that's, that's the way we're going to visualize the reverse shell, uh, the command prompt from our uh, client side. So again, what we did is we create a socket, then the client connect to the socket, we established a TCP connection, then we are going to send and command to our CMD process we opened with the POP sub process, and then we are going to send to the server the std out and std err and just then we are going to print it in our server terminal and that's the way we are going to visualize the command prompt at our client side. So let's move to our client side coding. As you can see we need at our client side this sub process because we are going to use to use it to open the command prompt and control it for the sub process. Um, the first step to do, of course, is to uh, create the socket, which is the TCP, and after it, I will need uh, to connect to the socket. Okay. What I did here is just a simple uh, verification to the socket if, if everything is, uh, is okay with the creation. When we successfully uh, connect it to the socket, we start with another endless loop. The first step we will take is to receive data from our server, right? Because we want to take this data and to put it into our command port process and then run these commands. So we take the commands we got from the server and then we will decode it in through the base64 and then we will decompress it and just then we are going to unpack the data. Just then, when we extract the data from our uh, uh, compression and, deco and encoding and the packing, we need to do something with this data. It's a regular uh, command prompt commands. So we need to take these commands, okay? And, sorry, to take these commands over here and to transfer it into our command prompt process in order to activate those commands. So, as you can see, if we got any exit command here, we are going to immediately close the connection. 
as you saw before we are going to close the connection from our server side if the server click it we're going to send it to our, to our client right and just then as the client will close the connection as well the server will do so so let's move into the sub processor pen when you uh, create sub processor uh, p open you're going first to mention the commands you wish to give to this uh, process in order that it will activate those commands then uh, you will uh, you will enable the shell with the true uh, condition the std in in my case is none the std out need to be supported sub process dot pipe in order that you will get the output of your commands you wish to activate and as well the std err which represent the error uh, error output of this process so after we will activate the commands we send to the sub process we need to take the output how are we going to achieve it we're going to achieve it through the communicate function so we're going to use we're going to take the um, the output of the process and the error output of the process through the communicate function so after we got the output and the error output output we are going to combine them together and send them to our server and that's the way we are going to visualize okay the command port command prompt at our client side so again let's see it again we are going to send input to our server to our client command prompt and after we got these commands we're going to <coughs> activate them through the sub process p open and then we will get two uh, kinds of output one is is for error and the second is for uh, healthy output if i can say and then we are going to send them again to the server as the server will get will got those outputs it will make sure we're going to see it at the receive side it will make sure to print it into the terminal so let's see uh, the live example of it as we say so we need to start with the server we need to create and bind uh, the socket with the server's uh, IP and port so let's run the program at our server side first let's capture the data with Wireshark and I wanted to show you why I wrapped the data I packed it twice and compress and encoding it I used uh, the regular uh, modules of the Python um, okay so let's capture some data let's activate the software at our client side okay as we can see we are going to see that the client start with the scene request and both of them established a TCP connection the next thing is going to be that we are going to send commands for our um, server side for our terminal server so let's start with the dir command as you can see 
when we use uh, the deal you will not be able to see the the deal command at the data section if you are going to sniff it because you are going to, to need to do a couple things in order to uh, see the data you need to uh, unpack that the data decompress the data and decode the data the length of the data is going to be 70 the dir uh, command and as the uh, client side will return us the the output as you can see here which this is the output is going to be in length of 4004 uh, and when we will get it the, this output we are going to decompress the data at the server side right decompress it and just then we are going to print it to our terminal as you can see over here let's press enter as we saw when we will press enter at the first time without typing anything we are going to give this user a second chance to input something so let's give another enter and as you can see we are going to keep this connection and I already sent a deal command to the client and the client sent back its output so let's see some errors or wrong commands as you can see is working very fast and we cannot see any we cannot understand anything at the data section until we are going to uh, unpack it and decode and decompress again and let's see some big data the help let's see how much bytes okay the length of the it's all oh, wow the length of the just the help data is uh, one four six zero bytes it's a lot and let's see what will happen if I will close the uh, connection with the exit command as you can see both of uh, both of them will close the connection together we will, no we will not have any open side so we can see the fin and the arc on both sides so thank you for watching me and I appreciate the time you spent at this video. I hope you understand it uh, correctly and you enjoy from it. So thank you very much. Have a nice day. Bye bye.